G'day guys, how you going? My name is Tech, welcome to my channel, Bootlosophy, all about boots, boot reviews, and in this case, boot care. I'm shooting to you from Wajuk country in Perth, Western Australia, and I recognize the traditional owners of this land. Now let's talk about conditioning boots. So I've got in front of me my first pair of Truman boots. Uh, I bought these in the seconds and samples sale in uh, April 2022. And uh, they come in, it's a very limited edition because I think they were, they were made as samples and so far haven't been uh, uh, shown on the website. Um, these were made in Seidel's Limerick leather. I have no idea what the characteristics of Limerick leather are. I uh, contacted uh, Truman and they suggested that I contacted Seidel, which I did. And after a response that said that their sales manager would got to me, uh, six weeks later, not a word. So I still have no idea what this is. Uh, and I'm not particularly impressed by Seidel's customer relationship strategies. But anyway, from what I can feel, uh, this uh, limerick leather feels very much like the double shot. It's quite a waxy, oily leather, uh, and it's quite a thick leather. Uh, I've worn these solidly for two weeks, which is my usual uh, break-in strategy, to wear them solidly for two weeks, and then to rotate them heavily for another two to three weeks, and then I put them into regular rotation. But at any rate, in doing so, I have scuffed the toes, uh, the usual wear points around the heels, uh, on both the boots, so it is about this time that I'd like to put in uh, a little conditioning to make sure that the leather's cared for. So, in order to do this, really in the conditioning, I, I'm sort of struggling between whether or not I use Big Four, which is a, uh, a, a sort of creamy leather conditioner that's not meant to darken the leather, and obviously this is a natural uh, coloured leather, and I don't particularly want to darken it, so, so this is very tempting. But the other one I'm looking at is RM Williams Saddle and Leather Dressing. I've had a lot of uh, 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 good experience with this using these on kip leathers, which is a slightly sort of corrected new buck type of leather, as well as on greasy oily leathers, uh, because they soak in really well. And it's more of a, a waxy balm. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm starting to prefer this. What other tools do I need? They're not particularly dirty, but I'm going to have to clean them because one of the, the, uh, the risks of leather is to get dirt and dust on them while you put uh, conditioners on them because that makes it just a very um, um, uh, scratchy paste that's almost like sandpaper, which will damage the surface of your leathers. So I have a variety of brushes. I've got a thick bristle brush. Uh, I've got a uh, soft cleaning brush and then I'll have a variety of brushes for, for uh, putting on the conditioners and to take them off and a toothbrush for the welt. I will also use RM Williams Leather Cleaner which I've also found very gentle. It doesn't foam up. What you do is you spray it on the leather uh, and wipe it off. As I said, these are not particularly dirty so I don't see a lot of cleaning but um, you can see here probably or hopefully uh, that because I wrap the laces around the shaft, there is some wearing and, and sort of oils that have been put on there around the shaft. So I'm going to clean that off. All right. So let's start. So in close up, um, hopefully you'll be able to see some of the scuffs and marks that I put on in a couple of weeks. It just shows how oily and waxy this leather is that it will scuff with a fingernail. And it's not like Chrome Excel, so pump full of oils on the inside that it seems to rub off. So um, you can see the scuffs across both of the toes of the boots and uh, some of the shaft where I've, I've been scratching it as I tie the laces and then the heels as I'm driving. And you can see the, the sort of oily marks of the laces across the shafts of both boots across the shaft of both boots and right round. So I'm going to clean that up and then we'll condition this. But first, I'm going to take the laces off. So 
So now that the laces are off, I'm going to uh, brush the dirt and dust off them, which is a really important thing because you don't want that dirt and dust to mix in with the conditioners and start to scratch the surface of the leather, which over time it will do and it will weaken the leather. So I've got here a hard cleaning brush, a slightly harder bristled shoe brush. And all I'm going to do with this is knock the dirt on, and any grime and fine particles off the uh, welts around the edges. On the other boot. And really all I'm doing is making sure that there's no little bits of sand particles hidden in there around the corners. I'm then going to switch over to a softer cleaning brush and I'm just going to knock the any dirt and grime off the surface of the leather across the seams not forgetting inside the tongue and I've labeled these brushes up <laughs> just make sure I get all the sand and grit and small little microscopic dust particles off Okay, that'll do. So, I'm going to clean these marks first of all before I condition. And I'm using RM Williams' uh, leather cleaner. It's a spray-on leather cleaner. Uh, you need a clean cloth. And what RM Williams' instruction says is to spray it evenly across the marks and then rub them off. So, let's give that a go. And then with a clean cloth, gentle rubbing motion, clean it off. If you really wanted to clean the marks off, which I don't particularly mind, uh, you might want to do this two or three times. In this case, these marks are caused by uh, these leather laces that have been conditioned themselves, so they're a little bit greasy. So it's actually grease that's got onto this, um, not something that will particularly damage this leather. But nevertheless, okay, I, I don't intend to clean anywhere else along here. I mean, it's not dirty at all. I've only worn these for two weeks. Okay, so we'll let the cleaning dry and we'll uh, condition them afterwards, see the result and condition them afterwards. So it's been about an hour since I cleaned the uh, uh, collar of the boots here. And you can see that most of the uh, dirt, the dark bits have come off, but the leather is showing a lighter, sort of more worn shade. Some of the dirt didn't come off. I mean, I didn't clean that well enough. I could go back and redo that, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, and on this boot, similar sort of look. I mean, that's definitely cleaner, even though it looks like it's scuffed and scratched. And maybe I could clean that a little bit more, but that's good enough for me. I'm now going to condition this. I, I've decided, rather than using Big Four, I'm going to use uh, Aaron Williams' saddle and leather dressing. This is an old tin. The new one comes in a white uh, label. Uh, and I've had this for a long time, and therefore I've had fantastic experience with these on this kind of waxy leather boots, as well as on uh, uh, waxy suede and, and waxy nubucks. So I'm going to start applying this. One of the things I'm going to do is make sure the welt is well conditioned as well. So I'm going to use a toothbrush to apply the, the dressing into that. It comes as a creamy, waxy consistency. So quite all right. So I'm going to just use a little bit on here to make sure that the welt is conditioned as well. Now, you can use a cloth. I prefer using my fingers. It gives, it's a lovely tax, tactile feel, but also I, I get to feel how much I put on. You can see these scuffs and watch them disappear as I, as I apply this dressing. 
it doesn't matter if you put in like a thick layer or a thin layer because the leather will absorb what it needs to do and you can always clean off the excess. I like doing it in sections so I know where I've been. So in this case I'm doing the toe caps first and then the, the, the vamp. The creamy waxy nature of the dressing uh, applies very easily and not forgetting the tongue which obviously is leather and needs conditioning as well and the inside flaps where often if you allow that to dry can crack we'll do the quarters next some people say not to apply too much on the uh, eyelets because you might loosen it. I, I think these are uh, quite sturdy leathers, they're sturdily made. I don't think I'd have a problem with that necessarily. I wouldn't whack a lot of mink oil on them though. And you see this here? Let's see what happens when I put the dressing on. It absorbs quite well. Do the other quarter. And as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm spreading it. I know I said it doesn't matter whether you put it thin or thick, but I'm still going to make sure that I spread it very evenly, or as evenly as I can anyway. And I'm massaging it into the leather as I do it. I'm not just slopping it on. And then the heel cup and the back stays. and into the leather heel stack. And then as a final finishing touch, I'm just going to condition the top of the collar and the edges of the lacing flaps where the leather is exposed. Okay, looking good already, compare that. Let's do the other boot. There's something very satisfying about massaging in oils and waxes onto leather. <laughs> it's a really tactile feel. Maybe I should take up massaging as a career. Okay, so they've both been done. Uh, I don't think these need a second coat. Sometimes they do uh, if the leather's been very dry, but as I said, these are just after two weeks wear, a little over two weeks wear. Um, so it's really their first condition to make sure that um, they're nicely conditioned from being out of the box. Who knows how long they've been sitting in there. I'm going to leave these now for about 15 to 20 minutes, go make myself a cup of coffee, and then I'll come back and clean up the excess. Well, it's been just over 10 minutes. I've allowed the dressing to be absorbed into the leather. There's a little bit of excess, um, particularly around the seams. Uh, but that's okay, that's where we're going to clean them up. I've got two brushes I'm going to use here. Um, the first one is a brush that I use for neutral polishes or neutral waxes. And I'm going to use this on this because it's, a, it's, a, it's not a coloured wax. And all I'm going to do is use this to knock off some of that excess uh, uh, conditioner from around the boot. So just making sure that I'm going around the welt where I had put some extra conditioner and then just knocking off any excess conditioner from the seams and around the hardware in case any is gathered around. Uh, opening up inside, clearing it out. It actually feels already absorbed. I mean, it is a little bit tacky um, and probably after a 24-hour period, it'll absorb even more, but this is enough for what I'm, what I'm going to do, because it's, a, it's not a, a particularly dry boot at this stage, having been uh, only been used for about a couple of weeks. So a little gentle, not brisk brushing, uh, the objective being to remove excess conditioner rather than to give it a shine. 
Let's take the second boot. Same deal. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is use a polishing cloth, and these come from Grand Stone. I, uh, if you've seen my unboxings of Grand Stone, you know that the, bo uh, the boots come wrapped in these. And fantastic use for these is as a polishing cloth. I'm not going to use it to polish. You can see this one's nicely used. I'm not going to use it to polish, but what I am going to use it is to um, more firmly run through the leather so that I'm removing uh, more excess, if there is any, on the surface of the leather, just to make sure that um, it doesn't stay tacky and then pick up dirt and dust as I'm, as I'm wearing the boot. The next thing to do, um, having properly knocked off all the additional excess conditioner, and just a few, yep, it's, it's nowhere near as tacky. I'm going to use a, a clean polishing brush and basically just give it a good polish, give it a good brushing. And there you have it, pretty much conditioned. All that's left is to put the laces back on. And just before anyone critiques me for the way I lace up my boots or how uh, fiddly and uh, uncoordinated I was, don't forget I'm sitting down in a very uncomfortable position where I'm actually not quite looking down on the boot. <laughs> and also the way I lace the boot up sort of suits my instep really. Okay, next one. And there you go, freshly conditioned Truman boots in Seidel's Limerick leather, whatever leather that is. Well, there you have it, guys, the conditioning of these Truman boots in Seidel uh, natural Limerick leather. Uh, the whole process took slightly under two hours uh, with a lot of time in between to allow uh, things to dry after you've cleaned them and uh, uh, allowed things to, to soak in and so on. Massive improvement in, in some of the areas where I've scuffed. Uh, it hasn't got rid of any kind of patina that's developing, so I think it will continue to develop really nicely. Um, and I think it, it feels good underhand. It feels like it's, it's a nice, moist, uh, breathable leather. So there you have it, guys. Uh, I hope you like the conditioning video. And if you want more of these and what types of conditioners to use on different boots, uh, let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, I hope you click on the like and the subscribe buttons to help me grow my channel. Until then, take care, guys, and I'll see you soon.